Uh, meantime, a Fox News alert now. Today, President Biden is hosting the Japanese Prime Minister for an official state visit. The two are reportedly planning to deepen the U.S.-Japan military alliance. It all comes ahead of Biden's first ever summit tomorrow with Japan and the Philippines. The three nations expected to discuss how to react to a potential conflict in Taiwan, as well as threats from China, while focusing on shared goals on military technology and infrastructure. Let's bring in Dr. Sumantra Mitra, global policy politics expert and director of research and outreach at the American Ideas Institute. Doctor, look, I think this meeting is great. I think it's important. I think it's vital. But are these meetings with Japan and the Philippines a little too little too late when it comes to Joe Biden's response? Thank you, Todd. Uh, well, you're right. One of the things that Joe Biden wanted to do is something that Republicans have been talking for a long time, is to form an alliance system based in Asia, where Japan, Australia, and Philippines, and all the other allies play a bigger part. One of the things that they need to do, however, is to make Japan, Philippines, Taiwan spend more than 1% on defense. An alliance system only means something when the states have capability to achieve the burden that they're supposed to take. So yes, Japan coming to Philippines and forming an alliance with the United States, uh, balancing China is great, only given if they spend money for their own defense, which they're not currently. They're a rich country. They can do. Okay, so spending money is one concrete action. I, I just am leery of meetings about meetings about meetings. So what concrete steps do you want to see Joe Biden take, either with Japan and the Philippines or on our own, to counter the China threat? Well, off the top of my mind, the four things that I can think of is, number one, as I mentioned, uh, course them, influence them to spend more money, at least more than 1% in defense, which is a measly amount of money for a rich country like Japan, number one. Number two, organized tech transfer with Japan and Australia. So we have uh, United Kingdom and Australia in our course alignment, but we don't have Japan in it. So if we can invite Japan to be a part of that alliance, then we would have tech transfer when it comes to the military, number two. Number three, we should invite Japanese investment in United States. Look, there is a very easy solution to that. You know, with Japan's manufacturing is not as cheap as China, obviously, so we are not sending our manufacturing to Japan. But what we can do is invite them to invest in the United States, help American workers and uh, manufacture uh, and do higher tech quantity like chips stuff, for example. Uh, and number four, we should have joint patrolling and interoperability of forces between Japan, Australia, uh, Philippines. So we, for, for now, we have like different tank systems. Uh, countries have different tank systems. Countries have different air defense systems. That needs to be interoperable. These are very simple things to do. Uh, it could be done in a matter of like a couple of years. Uh, I think those are the things that we should focus on. Okay, so this topic seems like the Biden administration is on board understanding the China threat. But yet there's another issue out there that sort of demonstrates maybe they don't truly understand the threat. Biden and his administration are defending its visa exemption program for Chinese nationals currently allowed to arrive in Guam after Republicans called it out as a loophole that can be exploited. Here's what the White House says. They basically say allowing Chinese nationals to enter Guam, where we do have a lot of military bases, mind you, and the Northern Mariana Islands without a visa is appropriate because it's ultimately good for those territories' economies. Iowa Senator Joni Ernst not, not agreeing with that, scolding Joe Biden, telling Fox News Digital, quote, the Biden administration shamefully defends an outdated immigration policy while our national security is on the line. Allowing our military base and national secrets in Guam to remain at risk shows just how seriously this president takes the threat of China. Your thoughts, doctor? No, I think the visa exemption is absolutely shambolic. I mean, if if you say that China is one of the systemic threats, according to the na new NATO doctrine, then obviously we need to stop people from, you know, going to places which are of military importance. But it is also just one of the issues. The ultimate issue is not just high quality visa or espionage, uh, but also open borders. 20,000 Chinese men crossed the southern border in the last one year. There is no way to vet them. We have no idea whether they're intelligence. We have no idea whether they're military. We, we have no idea whether they're operating with local gangs or local members. It's absolutely insane. These are the people who would be in different parts of this country and going to be like sleeper cells. Look, I, I don't mean to say that there are no genuine refugees, but if you don't vet 20,000 military-aged men coming to your country from your southern border, then you don't have a border. You don't have a country. 
Yeah, these military age men aren't going to Guam's beaches. They're not hanging out at California's beaches. They're here for a reason. And the fact that right. our administration, current administration, doesn't seem to appreciate that threat, to your point, is shambolic. It's shocking. It makes no sense. Dr. Sumantra Maitra, always amazing insight. We appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.